משפיע. Great. Well, thank you so much for that introduction and for the invitation to speak at the Pangeo Showcase. Um, my name is Erin Robinson, um, and today we wanted to talk about better science for future us, and we wanted to kick off our talk with a quote from our favorite book, All We Can Save, um, that's edited by Ayana Elizabeth Johnson and Katherine Wilkinson, and they write at the end about the title, and they say, we speaks to the collective, to collaboration, to community, and to the relational work at hand. And we is future us. And we feel like when we support teams through OpenScapes that we're helping all of us do better science. And I'm co-presenting with Julie today. And so I'll hand it off to Julie. Great, thanks Erin. And thanks everybody. It's so great to be here. Um, so the overall motivation for OpenScapes is that data intensive science can be super lonely and demoralizing. Um, and so we talk about this through analogies of Star Wars, you know, like Luke Skywalker, we've all had moments where we're staring at a challenge that we can't solve with the skill sets that we have. And so for me as a marine ecologist, I felt demoralized like this when I was a graduate student first learning how to code. But then again, with my research team later on, when we were learning how to code together and collaborate with code. So this kind of, um, these kind of sticking points slow us down and slow our science down and make us feel like it's like we're alone or it's too late for us to catch up. However, open science is this other completely amazing way to work that is super collaborative and empowering, like the force from Star Wars. Um, and like the force, open science lets us solve challenges in ways we never could have imagined was possible. It's something that we can see and learn from and become confident with. And it doesn't just help us get unstuck from that original problem, but it broadens our whole mindsets from the scope and the scale, like to the scope and scale of the research ch challenges that we can tackle. So I first felt this power of open science through the R community who supported me as a brand new learner and helped me feel like it wasn't too late and I wasn't alone. And so that's another thing about open science is that like the force, it's something that bring us, brings us together. And diverse, inclusive teams and communities are really key to this um, so that we can learn from each other's expertise and experiences and work together to address the, pro the pressing challenges ahead of us, which include climate change and climate justice and are things that none of us can do alone. So these ideas of data science and open science and teamwork are really key motivators for OpenScapes. And when we're not thinking about open science like the force, we're thinking about it like a, a big landscape. And so the OpenScapes Champions Program is our flagship program and it's a mentorship program for research teams. And so we help researchers move from sad and lonely science like Luke Skywalker or like these animals in the bottom left corner. We help them move um, to find their teams and to identify common needs and to start navigating through this landscape together with a cohort of peers and, and doing so in a, in a safe environment. So we're helping them orient to the existing pathways already created by the open data science communities and also help build new trails when there's a need. So, so far we've mentored five cohorts of research groups um, with 35 different teams since 2018 through the Champions Program. And we're just blown away by, um, by the teams that we work with. Uh, they've really felt the power of open science and teamwork um, the way I originally had. And there's some, we've got some quotes here that, that express that they're saying things like, this isn't just about coding in GitHub. This is about changing the way we do science. You know, this program has made me reimagine what I can do with my science and it's a way to merge empathy and science. So the team, you know, the teams are feeling this power the same way that, that, um, that Aaron and I have experienced. And I think really the biggest impact of OpenScape so far is that research teams are working more openly together and effectively together and seeing teams all around them and helping, um, helping them reframe analysis as a collaborative effort rather than an individual burden. 
So one of the ways that we pull this all together in a framework that we can think about is from a concept by Jim Collins from his book, Good to Great, about, and he calls this a flywheel. And so we start with Julie's own experience of her being a Mozilla Open leader, where she developed her leadership skills and invested and created the Champions Program curriculum that she just described, which is a four, eight month, or sorry, a two or a four month um, cohort that's twice a month. She then attracted research teams. So that was the 35 teams she just mentioned, bringing them together um, and through those five different cohorts delivered the champions program. So delivering the champions program and transforming their research teams. We just had a cohort finish on Friday. And one of the things that one of the teams told us was that through the curriculum that we delivered, they were able to see what was possible in working together through GitHub as teams. We didn't teach them how to use GitHub. So they went to the Carpentries um, and they, as a team, went through the Carpentries GitHub lesson together. And then they decided how they were going to use GitHub as their team. So really we're seeing that kind of transformation um, of taking existing curriculum, pairing it with this cohort, and then also seeing themselves as a team we're really working together as a team. And then from this, we, through the OpenScapes platform, inspire broader scientific communities to see what's possible by championing these teams. And so we have a blog, we have a community call, um, and we're just, and through social media, trying to really elevate and lift up these um, groups that are doing such great work. And then we repeat. And so I joined Julie um, as a mentor of the Champions Program um, back in November. And so we've done this wheel three more times um, since then. And we have um, several more cohorts planned for the rest of this year and early next year. But there were just two of us. And so through the funding that we got from NASA um, from a, an E2, a workshop proposal and um, working with NASA Earth Data, we proposed and were funded to build out the Champions Mentors Program. And specifically, NASA was interested in helping people using Earth Science data to use, the, use NASA Earth Science data on the cloud. And so we're taking our framework and partnering with them and building out the mentors, um, which are based at the NASA DAX, um, and then investing in additional curriculum development for cloud specific materials. So I'm gonna hand it off to Julie again to talk about what we're doing with the mentors. Great, so we're working with awesome mentors from um, five of the data centers or DACs as well as Impact. And um, we're really focused first on, on the people and building community and trust um, across the DACs and normalizing talking about the process of tutorial creation. And then we switched to focusing more on the process and identifying common parts um, across the tutorials that were already developed um, and thinking together about what was missing and really identifying shared needs for what um, what would help researchers use NASA Earth data on the cloud. And now we're, uh, we've just started switching into the, the technology more heavily now and developing skill, shared skills and practices using GitHub, using Quarto and through teaching uh, lessons with the Carpentries and also the Carpentries instructor training, as well as with 2I2C. And so the idea is that we're gonna be using these common tools and practices to create this process together. And what um, this looks like so far um, on side, the next slide here, yeah, our, um, we're creating this Earth Data Cloud cookbook. So this is an online ebook that is going to be a common set of cloud tutorials that will help um, any researcher who wants to use NASA data have this common set of skills so that they can continue along. And we really think about this cookbook as being bookended by materials that already exist. So to, it will be preceded by uh, materials from the Carpentries and common cloud foundations. And then on the other side, it will be NASA specific science tutorials. Um, 
And this is one example of a NASA science, a specific science tutorial. I was uh, a tester yesterday using my first, um, doing my first analysis using data from the cloud. And this is just a little preview of it, but it was really exciting to be able to run this um, tutorial on my laptop and, and do a, a quick analysis, which is just amazing, the amount of work that went into that. Um, so we're trying to streamline that for, um, for other groups. I'll pass it back to Aaron. Thanks. So together with the mentors, um, we'll then use that material that Julie just mentioned, um, and we'll bring together six to eight research teams that are interested in moving from the download model to the cloud um, using NASA Earth data. Um, and we'll deliver this champions program with the mentors as a specific support and transform these research teams towards working in the cloud. And so separate from like sending teams to or sending individuals to a workshop or to a, you know, to a short training, we're really, we know that this model over the four month period will help them actually figure out where they are as a group and where they need to go and make that migration. And so it takes us from our original landscape picture where we were supporting teams um, and we were, um, the landscape was a little bit empty to with our mentors from NASA, you can see they're supporting these teams all over the landscape and the specific ways that they're trying to move forward with their research onto the cloud. So we're super excited about how this program is gonna unfold um, and using the champions framework and the champions cohort model um, specifically to help teams that are on the pathway to move towards using the cloud for their work. So that takes us to amplifying those, those leaders. Um, so again, we'll amplify both the mentors and the science teams that have gone through the curriculum. Um, and we will use both the OpenScapes channels. And then since we're working with NASA, NASA Earth Data has amazing communication channels as well that um, they're excited to tell stories about these research teams. And then we'll do it two more times. And so one of the things that's interesting about this project is that we know that we didn't want to be the only ones that were leading cohorts um, and were stuck um, or, or limited by, by being the two that we're going to um, continue this program forever at NASA. We, we have a bigger vision for OpenScapes. And so what we've done is intentionally build in sustainability into this by amplifying and building up the mentors and developing their leadership skills, having the DACs be really supportive of this as parts of people's job, which is something that we also feel is critical to the success and sustainability of supporting users who are moving to the cloud. We need this to be a funded activity. We are um, building up these mentors. They'll continue to deliver cohorts um, of the champions program and we will will phase out. And so our hope is in three years that the DACs will be running cohorts and that we will be um, you know, celebrating them as part of the broader um, OpenScapes and open science community. And so I thought that we could end with a connection to Pangeo because one of the things I'm seeing is that OpenScapes provides a different kind of delivery mechanism and that I think we can appreciate that often when people are trying to sort of break into the open science landscape that it can feel like that Luke Skywalker feeling of being in the swamp and not sure where to go. And I could totally see Pangeo champion mentors having this co-invested curriculum with Pangeo materials and then supporting champions programs where teams are coming together specifically to transform their research using Pangeo and then, you know, continuing on with the Pangeo community, which I think has been um, is one of the most amazing communities I know of in space um, for amplifying leaders and um, moving science forward. So that's one idea that I thought we could come back to and talk about. And then with that, I'd like to thank our DAC mentors. We've had 15 people who have been along for this ride, who've been, who many of them are actually here on the call today. Um, and they've been willing to experiment with us. We've all been learning so much. They have been so open and generous, um, and it's been just a really exciting 
project to be part of. And it's kind of amazing when I think we've only been going for six months. And then I'd also like to acknowledge the DAX and NASA Earth data for the support um, and their willingness to contribute to this project. And with that, I'll say thank you. Thanks so much.